No, it can't be. More GanCube names I have to learn. We're gonna look at these first, because the sooner I get done with these, the sooner I never have to think about the names again. Let's try it out. The name Air is definitely right. This feels very light, but also a little bit flimsy. Something's happening. The reverse corner cutting is fine, but then if you kind of push diagonally like this, as you're reverse corner cutting, something is getting caught. And even when you like release into a smaller corner cut, it's still getting caught. I find it to be most apparent during home grip F moves like this, a relatively weak muscle you're using here, so it can be hard if the corner cutting is messing you up, like that. I'm gonna push through this turn. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> this cube comes with two instruction pamphlets. This is how to solve the cube. And this one is about the customization system. Hope you can read Chinese. As always, there is an English side. This is a lot. You don't actually have to take it apart to make adjustments, but I'm just doing this so you can more clearly see what's going on here. All we have is the blue springs and we'll use this to adjust the looseness of the cube. I think this says 0.6, it's upside down. And then the one on the top left is to remove it and the one on the top right should then be 0.8. Oh, my eyes hurt. This is pointing at 0.6. So what I should do is press this on, press down and turn. I can't see anything. Okay, uh, I just removed it. They just had to go with six and eight. These are very similar looking numbers, but I can see that the removal options at the top right, which means this one must be a 0 0.8. Oh my. I just wanna take a moment to appreciate, this is kind of cool. I don't know if they did this in previous two by twos, but I just noticed it now. This edge piece has magnets in it the same way a three by three would have magnets in the edge pieces. And then they would go here and attach the pieces together like that. Now every side is on 0 0.8. Wow, this is this is really loose, but I think it's better. Let me look at that problem from before. This is definitely not for me. I don't use super loose cubes, but I can see someone liking this. Now this one is the GAN 251M Pro. This is more like what I was expecting from GAN. Wait, what the? What is this? This is just here, so it doesn't make a sound when you jiggle the box. I guess that's why this cube is so expensive. Okay, it feels like pretty much the same cube, similar problems, but it feels a little bit uh, less flimsy. Oh, okay, so the first thing I notice is the springs are green and it comes with these. I believe blue and purple should both be looser than green and then clear or white will be tighter than green. Now this is the more exciting part here. You can actually change the magnets the same way as on the GAN 11 M Pro. Oh, and are these names a bit confusing? GAN 11 and GAN 251, but this one's a two by two, 51 millimeters, and this one is a, a three by three. Screwdriver, and it even comes with a silicone tip. Remember guys, when you buy cubes and they're expensive, it's because you're paying for all this stuff. Wait, there is no indication as to which side is stronger magnets. What, it doesn't even say. Oh wait, it says um right here. Let's give strong magnets a shot. There was actually a really cool new cube recently where instead of doing this on every side of every piece, you only had to do one piece because if you pick any one piece, the magnets from that piece are involved in every single turn. I'm not sure if that's better or worse, but it doesn't take too long to adjust all these. Okay, let's give this a shot. Wow, it's almost as if magnets don't really do much on two by two. <laughs> this feels really similar. I can tell that the magnets are stronger, but I cannot tell you if this is better or worse. The reason for that is on two by two, you have so much more control using your hands over where every layer goes. And there aren't any layers that you aren't directly holding unless you're doing flick turns. So these are the only turns where the magnets actually help you keep the layers aligned. And in my opinion, ending your turns to be perfectly aligned is not really the primary purpose of magnets and it can't even always get it done. Magnets are definitely better on bigger cubes because they can keep all the layers you're not holding aligned even when you're turning other layers. And let's try out the weak magnets. Okay, exactly what I expected. The cube got a little bit faster. Oh wait, there is one more difference. It's the corner to core magnets. So much like the GAN 11M Pro, there is that magnet inside there in the core and this corner magnet attaches to it. And in the air edition of this, it is not there. So the air or the base version came with the blue springs and I've put in blue springs here as well. So this one is the air. Oh, this is faster than I remember. 
And this is the Pro. Oh. Now I can't really control either of these, but it feels like I overshoot less on the one with the corner to core magnets or the pro version. Now I did drop it twice when turning, so maybe it's not that great. This one says pro, I don't know why, but it's supposed to be the leap. This one's got large angle magnetic alignment technology. I, I have no clue what that could mean. But this will be fun scavenger hunt to find the new feature. I'm not sure if it's just because I know this should be better that it feels more stable, but it still has the catching issue. So uh, that's still gonna be a problem. It just keeps catching. All right, where's this new alignment technology? Whoa, that's a really big magnet. Large, ang large magnet? You know what, for all I know, that could be the only difference, but this is a little bit better. Because of speed, usually it would lose stability, but because of the corner to core magnets, it's actually more stable than you would expect. I really like that concept because you don't have to do the trade-off between speed and stability as much, and you kind of get both. But that aside, the problem with this cube is it just catches too much, and I don't feel like I could use it. You'd have to be a very accurate turner under fast conditions for this to be worth it. Two by two is a pretty simple puzzle. Even a $7 cube can do really well so I don't think you need to overthink it. Next, we have the Diane Zanchi Pro M. Wow, that's a throwback, but this part is not. I feel obligated to say that one of my first speed cubes and my main way back in the day was a Zanchi, but I'm sure this is gonna be nothing similar. They're just using the name to sell more of these. This already reminds me a lot more of their Guhong V4 than of any old Zanchi, but let's try this out. I am absolutely loving how quiet this cube is. Besides like when I get some catches and it makes the high pitch noise, it's generally pretty low pitched. It does feel a little bit slow. The internals are also super smooth, kind of like the Tengyun V2 where it feels like a marshmallow. Wow, this is satisfying to turn. Let's do a solve on this where my first solve determines whether or not it's a good cube. No. Okay, the verdict, it's a good cube. I'm bad. You know what though? The magnets are pretty strong and because of that, the M turns are a little harder to do. That's because when you do slice turns, it passes by two layers of magnets at once. So if the magnets are too strong, then it gets doubly strong on the middle layers and it can make it take more effort. It's just easier to mess up. Not that this should cause you long-term problems, but it takes a while to get used to. All right. I'm not making that joke again. <laughs> what, this looks complicated. So you can see there's a two right here, much more visible than on the GAN cube. You just turn this with a screwdriver and that says three. So that's gonna be the weakest magnet and one is probably the strongest magnet. Yes, I was right. And let's try the M moves again. Oh, what the heck. I think with how slow this cube is, the weaker magnets suit it a little bit better because I don't need such strong magnets to keep this controlled. All right, I took a moment to figure this out and it has frustrated me. The guide gives three ways to adjust this and I don't know what the difference is between number one and number two. So I don't know what's the difference between using a screwdriver on the screw and changing this little one, two, three, four around it. I'll show you how to do it, but I can't explain what the difference is. So here you can just push down and change to a different number. This can change how loose the cube is. Four is gonna be loosest and one is gonna be tightest. Using a screwdriver on this will also change the looseness of the cube. So honestly, I, I don't know why there's two of these systems at once. And then the outer parts use the same tool, but the opposite side, you attach it to the little grooves on the sides like this and then you can twist to change the spring compression. Now, the weird thing about this is you cannot see what setting you're on. And also don't push down as you twist because you will turn the entire centerpiece. Just keep a very loose pressure on this and then you will be able to, you can still tell what setting you're on though. So you can just twist and listen. Oh no. That one, that last one just went way down and was louder. That's how you know you got back to the first setting. The components can only be twisted clockwisely and also it doesn't say what the settings even are, so you'll just have to figure it out. 
But based on this diagram here, it should be the same as the Moyu system, where as you turn this, it gets higher and higher. And then at the end, it goes right back to the bottom. And the bottom is the weakest springs. The top is the higher springs. After messing around with the settings, it seems like the best combination is weakest springs and weakest magnets, which makes it pretty much as fast as possible. And you guys know I don't usually go for the fastest setting, but the fact that it's like this means that I don't think the settings really suit it too well. The corner cutting is not very forgiving and its main redeeming quality is that it is pretty quiet and smooth. So I have to say that's kind of similar to the Tangen V2. It might be a little bit slower, but I can't really point to very specific differences between the two. Overall, it is pretty good, but I wouldn't recommend it with how many other options there are. Next is the X-Man Ambition. These are the most unnecessary little boxes, and it always feels too good to throw away, but I have so many of these, and yeah, it's just waste. Wow, that's actually a really cool logo. Okay, let's start turning. Ooh, ooh, this feels kind of good. Let's try parody. It's not broken in, so I can't really make any conclusions about it. It's definitely really smooth and fun to turn. It just feels like I have to turn a little bit more accurately. Otherwise, it's going to, like, instead of having just tough corner cuts, it's just going to not corner cut sometimes. Unlike the other X-Man Big Cubes, which are known for being a little bit slow despite everything else about them being great, the Ambition 4x4 actually turns pretty fast, so I definitely like this about it. It feels a lot more like the Valk, where it's a little hard to control, but the speed sort of makes up for it. It is only slightly bigger than the Aosu WRM, which is my main. I, I can use either of these cubes, although I do prefer the 59mm size. So I used the X-Man Ambition 4x4 for a while. I find myself locking up a lot on this cube, and I have to relax my turning a lot more, otherwise I will hit the corners and the cube will stop, and it just it's just really annoying for my hands. This cube feels almost the same as the Valk 4, and has the same main problem as the Valk 4, which is very interesting. I don't know about naming this cube Ambition, since it didn't stray too far from the Valk 4. And now we have Stardust Lube. This liquid's really thin and bubbly. A lot of the other SCS lubes are a lot more viscous than that, and that sort of makes sense because they're going for all speed and none of anything else, so we'll see if that's true. I have two JPRIM cubes here. On one cube I'll use Stardust, and on the other cube I'll use Lunar, which I currently use to speed up my cubes. There should already be Lunar in both of these, but it's been so long that they've probably dried out. Alright, it's got the childproof lock. Very simple, six drops, break in, and enjoy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, seven. I'm not gonna enjoy anymore. And let's just work that in. This one is four drops for some reason. And work it in. You know what? I feel like the difference between these is actually not that big. It makes more sense to try this on a big cube that has been losing its speed. I don't know how many drops to put. Okay, so this is where I'm noticing a bigger difference. When I use Lunar, it's a bit more viscous. I feel like I can actually feel the Lunar moving around in the cube, which I don't really like as it feels like it slows it down just a bit. But with the Stardust, this is actually really good. I can barely feel the liquidy part of the lube, but it still makes the cube really fast, probably even faster than Lunar. One thing I am concerned about though, is this may run out quickly given that it's quite a thin liquid. So I may have to re-lube more often, but this would probably help my times a lot more and I think that's worth it. Turns out the liquid was so thin because it is a water-based lube and not a silicone-based lube, unlike the other lubricants you'll find at Speedcube Shop. You may like it for 3x3, but I don't think it's necessary. I think just for big cubes, this gives me exactly the feel that I want. And before, the only way to achieve this was to take the cube apart, clean it, and then lube it. So yeah, I'm happy with anything as long as I don't have to go through all of that. And next, the YJMGC Square One. Okay, how do you turn this? Oh, this side, okay. I, I forgot how to hold it. The MGC Square One has been hyped up as potentially one of the best Square Ones now, and I will not be able to tell you how good it is. Oh, it turns really fast, and the magnets, the magnets are really good. It snaps to like, oh wow. Do other Square Ones do this? You can even see it perfectly snapping to each little layer. Meanwhile, on the volts, which is magnetic, 
I don't know how magnetized this part is. It just kind of feels all the same to me. Very bumpy actually, which is sort of weird. It's just, it's just slow, I guess. Also this hole here is way bigger. So you probably want to store it sideways so nothing falls in. And I think I'll end it off with a J perm. That was pretty good. Thank you to speedcubeshop.com, use the discount code JPERM for sending this all to me. And if you wanna buy any of these, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.